What is up, Humanoid Nation? Today's video I'm going to be reacting to is by Game of Ranks. It's a 10 dumbest things hidden in horror games. I want to see what they come up with, because I want to see the, what truly dumb shit they came up with that these people actually put in their games. All right, let's do this. Gaming is a fantastic format for horror, but sometimes developers like to get a little goofy or even something just misfires and it ends up funny. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 of the funniest things hidden in horror games. Starting funniest off with number 10, dumbest. something from Phasmophobia. For most of the stuff on this list, the funny stuff is clearly in the game, like something the developers want you to find, but this one really had people doing some digging to uncover it. Phasmophobia is one of the most interesting horror games to come it out. It is, I played it uh, like two or three times. Game it's where pretty you good. and your friends explore spooky locations to try to detect ghosts, and these situations can be really like impressively unpredictable a user on reddit named overall mall 986 suspected something weird going on with one of the ghostly voices but what they found was unexpected to say the least they took yeah, the too much time on whisper your audio reversed it and heard something they didn't think they would you'd think it'd be something creepy or weird and in a way it kind of is now we're trying to build it up a little bit here but there's really no better way to say it the ghost says lines from the b movie hi barry oh, you wearing a mustache looks good and all of it comes from hey a man rant. if all movie of out of all the movies you want to put lines in why not the b movie <laughs> nobody remembers b movie do you remember B movie? I don't. A bit in the a little script. bit. The B movie on its own is such a bizarre and uncanny, weird kids movie. There's a reason it became a meme. Uh, but hearing like it jazz. whispered by a ghost is kind of strangely creepy and completely hilarious. Everybody knows sting someone you die to waste them on a squirrel. There's nothing about the lines themselves that are that funny. They're some of the many non-jokes littered throughout the movie. It's just that for whatever reason, the developer thought to take part of the script, have their ghost say it, and then reverse it, and that'd be a great little Easter egg. And let's be honest, I wonder, it like, was, how do you, how do you one of the figure this out? Like bizarre and hilarious Easter eggs we have ever heard of. And number nine is something you'll find in Resident Evil 6. Oh, like, let's go, Resident Evil 6. It's mundane and down to earth, but it's still pretty amusing in its own way. Resident Evil 6 is kind of the black sheep of the long running series, but there's still some fun stuff to find in it. Like in Chapter 3 of Chris's campaign, normally you're supposed to be rushing forward to rescue some of your BSAA buddies from a giant snake monster, but along the way, you may spot some playground equipment slightly off the beaten path. Being the professional soldier Chris is, of course, he takes takes a detour over to the playground to investigate. I'm sure that guy who is currently digesting in the snake's stomach, he'll be fine. No rush there, yeah, right? He's fine. But there are Just give him some water. You can do here. You can go down the slide, which Chris does in the traditional drunken Whee! teenager style. <laughs> or you can ride this panda thing. That is just of all the resident horrible. Evil protagonists chris redfield goofing around in children's toys is probably the goofiest he's a grizzled military man so seeing riding, him riding a panda is ride hilarious. that panda chris There's redfield one little easter egg left too when he gets off the panda he'll do the leon throne sit animation like from resident evil 4. the whole thing's just all around goofy as hell and we love when resident evil games aren't afraid to take the piss out of themselves like this. yeah it's pretty and fun number eight this one comes from the evil within consequence the DLC for a game as I never played this game. I gotta start getting within, into this. There are actually a lot of really goofy little secrets lying around. They're all kind of tricky to find, but there's some silly stuff to uncover in what is otherwise a relentlessly grim game. In our opinion, some of the Easter eggs hidden in the DLCs, specifically the Consequence DLC, where you play as Kidman, are among its best. The first one is encountered in Chapter 3. You go into this office area and you find a vending machine. If you use it 15 times Rain. in a row and then turn around to look at this post, it falls off the wall, revealing a peephole. When you look through it, you see, well, I, I don't know what I oh, expected. Oh, look, a good old uh, glory It's the monster hole. from this DLC dancing on a stage with enemies raving beside them. Well, Yo, the techno what version of the game. Am I looking? Play. What the hell? It, is is that the dead light from it coming out of its head? What am I? What the fuck is this? I am so confused. It's 
bizarre, but it gave me a laugh. There's another pretty clever little secret near the end of the DLC as well. In chapter four at the end, you have to chase Leslie and you just so happen to pass by the stem machine that's responsible for basically all the bad stuff that happens in the main game. With the DLC being a prequel, you're at a point where you can basically stop things before they even begin. And yeah, well, that would be fun. Rubik's brain at the center of the machine will actually cause the game to immediately cut to the credits. That alone is kind of funny, but if you watch the credits for a while, you'll see this goofy picture of the three main characters posing for a picture with congratulations, you did it, written on it before it abruptly cuts back to the game, and you get an achievement called <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Stick to the Script. You gotta just do the right thing. At number seven is Silent Hill 3. Few horror franchises are as serious as the Silent Hill games. Presentation-wise, they're about as straight-laced as you can get. They rarely get campy like the Resident Evil series, but for whatever reason, the but series fun, also campy. has some of the goofiest secrets in any horror game. Silent Hill 3 like, is an oppressively grim game normally, but if you manage to uncover some of its secrets, uh, it suddenly becomes one of the silliest horror games of all time. Case in point, if you put in the Konami code when starting a new game plus, then the detective that helps out Heather will appear in his underwear. Wait, Konami code in PS3? I didn't know you can do that. Good to know. Like, he still has his coat on, so he kind of looks like a flasher. But yeah, that happens. Uh, there's also a princess heart costume, which has an entire magical girl transformation sequence. Sailor Moon transformation. Seeing a character that's normally pretty unglamorous and realistic looking perform an over-the-top anime transformation is incredibly ridiculous. Yeah, and the it extra is. effort they put into this one is absolutely great. But and it's funny. We can't talk about the Silent Hill games without at least mentioning the UFO endings. And if you're wondering about the dog stuff, stick around. You're going to want to watch to the end of the video if that's what you're here for. Like, these games have some kind of joke ending hidden somewhere. And Silent Hill 3 is... is especially ridiculous. If you've performed all the steps necessary to unlock this ending, when you get to Harry's apartment at the beginning of the game, instead of finding him dead, you find uh, whatever this is. It's a ridiculous scene that ends with aliens blowing up Silent Hill completely, and then someone coming in to sing the Silent Hill song. The whole thing is absolutely bizarre. I and just like at the aliens just having a cup of coffee, even just sitting there and chilling. It. Number six is in World of Horror. Uh, here's a smaller but still pretty goofy thing. World, World of, of horror. horror is kind of a wild mix of roguelike and Japanese horror. And while it never really takes itself super seriously, there aren't a ton of jokes in the game. There is one pretty funny little secret hidden in here, though. How this game works is that you're investigating different cases in this strange little town, trying to survive and stop cultists from bringing an old god back into our world. One of the things you can do while on a case is visit the shop, which just so happens to be run by a dog. See what I mean by this game doesn't really take itself seriously? Like, run there's by not a dog. really okay. a lot of stuff you can do besides buying stuff you need, but it's possible to waste enough time at this place that you actually get a special ending. One of the major mechanics of the game is this doom track. If it fills up to 100%, then the world ends, and certain things you do either raise or lower it. One way to increase doom is to restock the entire store with items. Every time you do that, the doom count increases by 3%. See what we're getting at here just keep hitting that restock button watch the doom level increase and hey where did the dog go when you get the meter to 100 oh. the game immediately ends with the message that some hands reach out and pull you into the shop the ending they killed the dog ridiculous no. and kind of creepy that says a few weeks later a new brand of dog treats becomes a huge hit with the dog shopkeepers the whole thing would probably be creepy honestly i wasn't paying creepy, attention to this one so dogs. even when the they dog try to die. look scary they're mostly just goofy looking at number five is Dead Space 2. A classic hey, one. Dead, Dead Space, Space 2. 2. If you manage to beat the game on hardcore difficulty. Yeah, no, that's never right. going to happen with the me. I can never cannon, do hardcore battle. basically a big foam finger. Now, yes, it does look like a ridiculous joke weapon, but it's actually incredibly powerful. Anything Isaac points at will just explode and die, and it'll fire as fast as you can pull the trigger. So having this gun hand thing Damn. makes the game incredibly easy. Yeah, it does. But even with all the challenge removed, there's just something incredibly satisfying about using this thing. A big part of what makes the weapon so great is the You're sound number effects, one, my though. guy. It's literally just Isaac saying bang, bang, and pew, pew when you use it. Like, it's 
really, really funny. While Dead Space 2 is, you know, generally considered to be a superior game to Dead Space 3, 3 might actually have it beat in the goofy weapons category. Oh god, category what do they have in Dead because Space 3? Because instead of a pointing foam finger, you get the even more amazing devil horns in that game. Works basically the same devil way, horns. but if you try to reload it, Rock then on, Isaac dude. does this little rocking out animation while a guitar riff plays. So they found a way to make the whole thing even more ridiculous. <laughs> Number four is in Dying Light. Uh, for an open world game, um, Dying Light is the closest thing out yeah, there. Yeah, no, I never played this game. Horror experience. It's a game that takes itself pretty seriously. Or maybe I did. I time, just don't remember. But when it gets silly, Hell it gets. I mean, really, really out there. There's so many Easter eggs in this game, but the two best, at least to me, the funniest, in my opinion, are the two elaborate game parodies they snuck into this game. Firstly, World 1-1 from Super Mario. Uh, Wait, you go on this what? random roof in Old Town, you find a green pipe, uh, go down it, and it transports you to the Dying Light version of the first level of Super Mario on the Rick's NES. Oh my god. <sighs> yeah, she have the... Oh... Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, that's impressive. Uh, almost the same music, because you can't, you're going to get sued if you actually use the real music. Yeah. It's really crappy looking and weird. Yeah, and you don't want to get sued. It hilarious. I mean, look at the Goombas. They're tiny zombies with a brown oval on their heads. There is another stupid game parody in this game, though, hidden in the antenna station area. Hidden around a corner, there's this random little flower you can interact flower with, power. which will teleport you into Dying Light's version of Plants vs. Zombies. Oh, God! Again, it's so dopey and half-assed that it's hilarious. The plants are literally just plants from the game, and the zombies are standard zombies with extra crap on their heads. The whole thing's incredibly dumb and surreal, and it's about the last thing you expect to find what's normally a pretty dour game. And number three is Fear 2 Project oh, Origin. Uh, this one's mostly yeah. just... Oh, shit. Okay, okay. Fear... I'm not gonna lie. Fear scared the crap out of me. I played the first one. Couldn't finish it. Because I'm a bitch. <laughs> it's like the little girl just... scares the shit out of me. But I'll get back to that game eventually a bunch of little things but there's so many little jokes and easter eggs in the school section of fear 2 project origin that it's kind of nuts there's the class roll call that includes all kinds of weird stuff like a chibi version of alma uh like a bunch of guys who are obviously the developers a bearded woman and for some reason a squirrel the yeah. books are pretty goofy too there's one that's just called cats and another called choose your own story garbage day which is a reference Fish to that day. old meme there's other stupid books like do-it-yourself surgery create and clones and one plus two equals money it seems like everything has some kind of joke in it like look at the cpr poster there's a line that says step three start kissing him use tongue if needed and <laughs> step five repeat step three if subject remains unconscious then he is dead probably the most secret little joke in this area is when you get to this room that has a bunch of farm standees for a play or something if you specifically hide behind the donkey then the soldiers start attacking you uh they'll have a unique shout and they'll say He's behind the ass. Uh, it's not even everything. I in love this that. Fear 2 has He's way behind more the ass. I remembered, but the That's something would ever hear out of Fear is game. really just jam packed with them. And number two is The Suffering 2. You'd never know from looking at what? it, but this is a game with one of the dumbest and most elaborate Easter egg secrets I've ever seen. To see it, you have to get to level five, which isn't too far in. Then you go inside this pawn shop. Dr. Killjoy taunts you for a bit before opening the door to the back room. And from there, you go inside this bathroom where a guy explodes. Now, you have oh. to do a very specific sequence of actions. Turn off the light, turn on the water faucet, and flush the toilet three times. After that, yeah, I would do the, the water, I do turn back too. on the light, then go back into the main pawn shop to find a gigantic stick with some olives skewered through it. When you bash it, that's when the Easter egg is activated. Make sense? No? Well... What? That is so specific. Doing all that shit just... Oh, my God, my brain hurts. Oh, my God. Scoop, pickle, what? What? <laughs> From there, it only gets weirder. After you get further into the level, there's a part where an enemy will burst through the wall. Normally, it's just a standard enemy, but with the Easter egg active, it's a purple Kool-Aid-style dulge. 
busting through instead and attacking you with a swizzle stick. Like, just look at this guy. This is one of the most bizarre things I have ever what seen. What am I game. watching? So you kill him, and you can claim the swizzle stick for yourself, which is just a ridiculously overpowered melee weapon. It so is overpowered. It's a much okay. dumber version of Dead Space's foam finger weapon. The fact that they made whatever that guy is supposed to be just for this Easter egg is impressive. But somewhat uh, very the bad version of the Kool Aid Man. Really obscure, and the reward is really goofy. But this is one of the best Easter eggs we've seen in a horror game. And finally, at number one is Silent Hill 2. You know exactly what we're talking about here. It's the dog ending. I told you to stick I around. I don't know and I'm what I'm ta you what you're talking about. Well, let's After do this. After the UFO ending from the first game, which is in of itself very goofy, the developers wanted to up the ante and goofiness for the sequel's secret ending, and wow, did they. In many ways, Silent Hill 2 is more serious than the first game and deals with some really heavy issues. But if all you know about it is this ridiculous ending, you would have no idea. Instead of having James face his fears and confront the secrets that brought him to this town, if you manage to get the dog key, which only becomes available after completing the three normal endings, and use it on a locked door in the hotel at the end of the game, you discover the shocking secret to Silent Hill. It's not actually a haunted town, there's just a dog in a room secretly controlling everything. It's such a goofy explanation for That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. Even for a game. That is so goddamn dumb. Oh my god, I'm broke. The ga this video broke me. Oh my god! Let's finish this. Or what is considered by many to be like the best psychological horror game ever made. And the whole thing is so dumb that you really can't help but laugh. All that really happens after that is that James walks in, sees the dog awkwardly pushing a lever, and then collapses. The dog shot. licks him then too? The dog comes down and starts licking him on the face before cutting the, to the credits. The credits themselves are also pretty funny. It plays this annoying dog song over a little music video that includes photo shots of the main characters and weird outtakes from the main game. The dog ending the Silent 2 is legendary for a reason, and it's easily one of the funniest things in a horror game. And that's all for today. But Silent Hill! If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new. But, but. Uh, it's Silent Hill! The dog did it? The entire Silent Hill. Oh my God! <laughs> pasito a pasito, suave suave.